for more, we can speak to our foreign editor, Kedevin Gorgistani. Hello to you, Kedevin. Um, if the U.S. were to withhold these offensive weapons that it would be sending to Israel, how much of a blow would that be for Benjamin Netanyahu? Well, uh, so far, at least according to Israel's uh, chief military spokesman, uh, this would not prevent them from carrying out their operation in Rafah or elsewhere. That was the statement. But uh, that's in the short term. Uh, it probably doesn't impact uh, Israel too much. But it is a very serious signal from uh, the United States, which is by far the uh, largest supplier of uh, military aid uh, to Israel. As we see uh, on this graphic uh, here, the U.S., uh, in the period between 2019 and 2023, uh, amounted to 69 percent of Israel's weapon, way in front of uh, Germany, which is the second uh, supplier. And uh, suspension of military aid to Israel hasn't happened in more than 40 years. The last time was back uh, during the Reagan years, when he uh, suspended or banned the sale of uh, cluster uh, bombs. Uh, now. It has to be said also that uh, U.S. military aid to Israel is very diverse. Back in 2016, the U.S. signed a memorandum of understanding covering uh, the period between 2018 and 2028, and they agreed on $38 billion in direct military aid, $33 billion in grants that would help the Israelis buy U.S. military equipment, and $5 billion for missile defense systems, of course, uh, the most famous one being being uh, the Iron Dome. And that is something that Joe Biden made very clear in his interview that he would not touch. He said, we are not walking away from Israel's ability to defend itself. We're walking away uh, from Israel's ability to wage war specifically in uh, Gaza. And uh, they're not even considering withholding all offensive weapons. They're really focused right now, at least, on those heavy bombs that cause extreme damage, extreme casualties in very densely populated areas uh, like uh, Gaza. So, uh, so far, they're not considering uh, stopping, for example, tank ammunition or uh, other types of uh, artillery. So right now, it's still very uh, small sliver of the U.S. military aid to Israel. Uh, but the signal that it sends is very, very important. Uh, later this Friday, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is going to submit a report to Congress about the conduct of Israeli troops in Gaza. Any idea what it might say? Well, uh, the State Department has to give its assessment on two things. One is whether Israel uh, followed international law and U.S. law in how it used U.S. weapons in Gaza. And the other is uh, whether it violated humanitarian law by uh, possibly impeding the flow of humanitarian aid in uh, Gaza. And it's expected to include an assessment on Israel, but also other uh, countries that are currently using U.S. weapons uh, in different conflicts around uh, the world. There's already been a delay. It was supposed to be given on Wednesday. We're expecting it to uh, be uh, delivered uh, today. That's still uh, not clear. And it shows uh, the difficulty for the Biden administration when it comes uh, to Israel and uh, their assessment. And the reporting, according uh, to uh, Axios, is that uh, this report is going to be highly critical of Israel's conduct of its war in uh, Gaza, but we'll stop short of saying that Israel violated humanitarian law or U.S. law or international uh, law. And that's because they need to strike a careful balance. If they say that Israel uh, didn't do anything wrong, that would spark a backlash, especially from the left wing of the Democratic Party that is already asking for uh, the U.S. to condition, at least if not halt, all uh, U.S. weapons going uh, to uh, Israel. There were uh, more than 80 uh, Democrats on the Hill who wrote a letter to uh, Joe Biden to say that uh, they believe that there was evidence that Israel was at least violating humanitarian uh, law. Uh, but if Joe Biden and the administration decide uh, that, yes, Israel did violate, uh, whether it's international law or U.S. law, uh, then uh, that could put more pressure on Joe Biden to go further on stopping those weapons from being sold uh, to uh, the Israelis. There are existing U.S. laws that ban uh, the U.S. from selling weapons to countries that are accused of violating human uh, humanitarian law. 
and it could also politically be a problem because then there would be a backlash uh, from uh, Republicans who are already very critical of the halt in uh, those uh, mega bombs, and also uh, the middle, the pro-Israeli uh, Democrats who uh, are not seeing uh, this as a good sign uh, for the U.S.-Israeli relationship. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Kevin Gorgestani, our foreign editor.